You know, one of the things that I love about what you and Roy do here on the Healing Quest show is that you introduce us to the very best pioneers in natural health. Well, thank you, Michelle. And one of those pioneers is exactly who we're gonna meet in our first story today. Hi, Aiden. Come on in. Dr. Lindy Woodard and her partners have a thriving pediatric practice in Mill Valley, California. They offer all the standard services for their patients, but they do it from a very different point of view. So the name of our practice is Pediatric Alternatives. It was actually founded by my partner, Stacia Landsman, in 1998, and I joined her about a year and a half after that. Uh, Stacia had seen that, she, that children were getting too many vaccines and too many antibiotics, including her own children, and she felt it was time to do something new. The main reason I became disenchanted with Western medicine is I actually saw the kids getting sicker from the treatments that I was giving them. The antibiotics caused them to have diarrhea and recurrent ear infections, and the food they were eating was becoming more and more processed. They weren't thriving. Can you do that? To reverse that trend, Lindy and her partners have integrated into their practice an emphasis on food as medicine, along with naturopathic principles and homeopathy. Homeopathy completely changed the way that I practice medicine. Homeopathy is, are medicines that are made from natural substances, uh, plant, vegetable, or mineral. And usually these substances are made into a tincture, almost like herbal medicine. And it's shaken or it's swirled and it's diluted many, many, many times. So there's actually no molecule of the substance left anymore. And at, at that point, the, the, the medicine becomes energetic and actually uh, uh, interacts with the energetic body, with that which uh, causes us to be alive. It's actually our first uh, line of medicine for most of our children. So say a child comes in with an ear infection. So uh, in our practice, we almost never treat ear infections with antibiotics. Wow. I know, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? And we've been doing this now for almost 14 years, and I'm really proud to say that we almost never have a child who goes to the ear, nose, and throat doctor for those little tubes. And we don't have any children who have recurrent antibiotics to treat their, their ear infections. It's just a completely different approach towards caring for children's health. It's working incredibly well. My children are rarely sick. For the most part, they've been free of any kind of allergies, no antibiotics. We haven't had the ear infections that most children go through. One of the significant ways we used homeopathy was for my daughter. Um, and she had a, uh, she got a bladder infection. And I didn't want to have to do antibiotics because we had already had to do a round of antibiotics. So I worked with Lindy and we came up with a complete, you know, this big protocol um, and we were really able to um, not have the infection go any farther and reversed it. Nutrition is also a big part of the integrative approach here, especially whole foods that are nutrient dense, chemical free and rich in healthy fats. I believe with all my heart that food is medicine and bad food is actually uh, harmful. And milk is one of those very controversial and interesting issues. Raw milk is a, is a blessed food. It's a food that is curative, it's natural, it's alive, and healthy. In our practice, we encourage our patients to drink milk, and in particular, milk that has not been pasteurized or homogenized, and that is otherwise known as raw milk. I've had a number of situations in my practice where I had children that were sick from all kinds of reasons, particularly allergies and gut issues. And I have found that raw milk has actually healed them because it has living organisms in it. It's easily absorbed by the body. Uh, when it's pasteurized, a lot of the, the nutrients that are heat sensitive are killed by the heat process. Dr. Woodard says raw milk from a properly regulated local dairy is just as safe as pasteurized homogenized milk and much more nutritious. However, her advice is very different when it comes to the issue of soy for both children and adults. We have been discouraging our parents since the beginning of our practice in using soy products. Um, First of all, when I see a baby that's been drinking soy formula, I can actually tell without even the mother telling me. I can smell it, 
and the baby has kind of a waxy look to them. So I've known that just in my observations for years. And again, the research has pointed out to us that, that soy has a lot of plant hormones in it that actually competes with our natural hormones. So our body gets confused and stops producing our natural hormones that we need and we end up having health issues. To avoid those issues, the doctors here encourage moms who can't nurse or who need to supplement their breastfeeding to make formula using a recipe in the Nourishing Traditions cookbook. So I commandeered the kitchen at Lindy's office to see just how easy it is to do this. I convinced Amy to show me how she made the formula for her son Aiden when he was just a baby. The formula is based on raw whole milk and other ingredients including fresh whey, lactose, an infant probiotic, nutritional yeast, gelatin, cod liver oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, and acerola, a natural form of vitamin C. And although it may look a bit complicated, Amy says it's not difficult, especially now that a homemade baby formula kit is available. So you could buy the kit for six months where you'd have everything you needed, excluding the raw milk, the cream, and the whey. You have to make your own whey, um, which is a very simple process again. But the recipe, once you get going on it, is very simple. It's simple. Very simple. And the source of that recipe, the Nourishing Traditions Cookbook, also turns out to be very important here in many, many ways. We consider it the Bible in our practice, so I give them assignment, an assignment to read the introduction to all the chapters and to pick and choose what's interesting to them. Maybe some bone broth, maybe some raw milk, uh, soaking their grains to make them more uh, bioavailable and digestible. So that's how we teach uh, nutrition in our practice. It's a wonderful, rich source of recipes and, and nutritional advice and the reason why certain foods are medicine. I think it, it really sets a standard for whole food nutrition in this culture. Very, very needed. Oh, they are so cute. I know, it must be those healthy recipes. That cookbook certainly gets great reviews. Have you seen it? I have. It's a great back-to-basics approach to cooking meals that not only taste good, but they're also really good for you. 